from inspired scripture, holy, inerrant, authoritative, sufficient. We know all this from holy scripture because scripture is the spectacles we need in order to understand the creation. For Darwinism, in effect, evolutionism is the spectacles. Unless you wear the spectacles of evolutionism, you don't understand anything. For Calvin, the Bible is the spectacles through which you must look at everything and take off those spectacles and you walk around like a blind man and misunderstand God's world. And so for Calvin, and this is his relevance too for us today, Christian schools are necessary. Schools for boys and girls, as Calvin put it. For us, elementary, high school, university even, if we could have such a thing. Because Calvinism, like evolutionism, is a worldview. And our children need to be taught the truth in their schools, the same truth they're taught in their homes and in the church. And that's why we have Christian schools and we support them heart and soul. One final thing in this connection, suffering. Suffering plays a big part in evolutionism because with survival of the fittest, a lot of people, a lot of animals die. Nature is red in tooth and claw. For Calvin, suffering is necessary because of the persecution of the saints for Christ's sake and for the word of God. The evolutionists and their humanist manifestos call for one world government whose values are necessarily and intrinsically hostile against biblical Christianity. They are in their own way preparing the way for Antichrist and his kingdom. And here we say with Calvin then we need suffering. Suffering unto martyrdom if necessary. We're not with the survival of the fittest, we're with the perseverance of the saints in the midst of a hostile, Christ-hating, truth-denying world. And finally, one concluding section. We need to look at the relative influence of Darwin and evolution on one hand and Calvin and Christianity on the other. Because this explains much of what is going on in the Western world today. Think first of all of the state, civil government, society. There is evolutionism standing behind and supporting humanism, which in turn influences education, civil government, and popular culture, out of which is born political correctness, which is promoted and enforced. Thus, Christianity is forced out of the public sphere more and more and increasingly criminalized. You can see this even in its beginnings here in America. It's further along in Ireland and the UK. It's further along in Canada and Sweden. Why? Evolutionism. That is a big element in it. But what about the churches? What about the churches and their preaching and their seminaries and their day schools? What about the Church of England? Darwin once sought the ministry in that denomination. Well, the Church of England this very year apologized to Darwin. Got down its knees, as it were, and groveled. Oh, you were right and we were wrong. Despicable. What about Roman Catholicism? Earlier this year it held a big conference on science and emphatically endorsed the theistic evolutionism, mocking the idea of biblical creationism, mocking that idea too in schools. Its position is that creationism or even intelligent design ought to be driven out from all forms of schools. And then, of course, to run along the line a little bit further, we have the various compromise theories. You know them. Theistic evolutionism, progressive creationism, the gap theory, 
the framework hypothesis and all the rest, and there are so many of them because there's none of them that's satisfactory and none of them are stable, and you have them in the churches and seminaries and universities around you in Grand Rapids, in Michigan, in the U.S., in North America, and all around the world these issues are playing themselves out. And we say, what about Calvin, who says in his commentary on Genesis, in the argument or introductory section, in Genesis now he says this, the Bible must not be treated as a, quote, wax nose to be shaped according to unbiblical thinking. I could perhaps put it best like this. Evolutionism is a universal theological solvent. A universal theological solvent. That is, this theory and its worldview, created by state and school, they dissolve Christian doctrine and ethics, the universal theological solvent. This is the invariable result, especially given time, wherever evolutionism is embraced to whatever extent initially because principles work through. Embrace evolutionism, Genesis 1 to 3 must be reinterpreted. The creation of the universe and life and man in six days is wrong. So we need to look at it again and appoint study committees and all the rest of that nonsense. Then there was no serpent at the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. There is no devil and there are no fallen angels. There is no fall. There is no original sin. There is no total depravity. And death is not God's punishment for sin. There is no first Adam and therefore there is no second Adam, Christ. There is no tree in the Garden of Eden and therefore there is no tree at Calvary, and there is no redemption at the cross, and there is no second coming of Christ in the clouds at the end of the world. And if God is not creator, as the Bible says, he's not governor, he's not redeemer, and he's not judge. And as this evolutionary theory dissolves Christian doctrine, Christian ethics to corrode. We see this in our society. It is a necessary outworking of Darwinianism. Marriage is one man and one woman for life. With evolutionism comes the spread of fornication, adultery, divorce, remarriage, sodomy. Probably the next thing will be polygamy. Maybe bestiality will be allowed. The lowering of the age of consent to allow pedophilia because that's next on the homosexual agenda. Principles work through and the Sabbath. No creation week means no rest one day in seven for the private and public worship of God, no need to go to church, no worship of God, and no means of grace to strengthen us. This is the necessary result of evolutionism, and for the consistent secularist, this is their deliberate purpose with evolutionism. This is what they are out to achieve. So what about you?